live. We are now live. Hey, players, welcome to another Q&A live stream here on my channel. For those of you that are new here, my name is Josh. Every single week, I make videos sharing tips, ideas, and stories teaching you how to be your best self. And on Thursdays, I do a little Q&A live stream, talk to you guys, see what's on your mind. If you're someone that's a regular, feel free to jump into the chat and say hi. If you're someone that's new here, feel free to ask a question, whatever's on your mind, whatever it is you want to talk about. I'm here to answer, share dating advice, talk about school, life, relationships, whatever it is you want to know. That's what this is all about, learning and growing and giving advice and helping each other out. So um, let me just kind of jump in here. Everyone in here that's joining in, uh, feel free to jump into the chat and say hi if you guys are j watching. Uh, let's pull over the early, see who the early birds in the live stream here are. Let's see who we got. The it should be popping up here in a second. If you haven't already hit the thumbs up on this live stream, super excited to jump on with you guys again and chat as well. Um, let's see who we got in here. Mohammed Belsine, welcome Mohammed, good to have you. Jalen's in here. Connor Jones, always a pleasure to have, on, have you on here, Connor. Dominic Libassi, good to have you, Dominic. Uh, Alex Ribby is in here. Uh, Katie and Hall, Matthew Cruz, the Josh Sings, and the Juan Speaks. Happy to have you guys on here. Always a pleasure to chat with you guys as well. Yasmin A. Oh, there we go. Now it's popping up. Yasmin A is in here as well. Connor Jones, Dark Tar Official. Good to have you, Dark Tar. Jim Machine. Hmm, the chat's going slow here. Let me close it and reopen it. But uh, everyone joining in, feel free to jump in. All early birds, you guys will get your due shout outs. Um, but yeah. If you guys have questions, things that are on your mind, something you want to ask, feel free to jump into the chat and ask it. Um, I love answering questions and kind of helping you guys out with whatever's on your mind. Let me just set this back up. Cool. Dono the Gamer is in here as well. JJ Plays. Good to have all of you guys on here. Now, look, as I go through and ask, answer your questions, what's up, Brittany? Good to have you. Uh, as I go and answer your guys' questions, I'm going to start grabbing things from the chat. So feel free to jump in and ask them. Privyet, uh, Rage Master. Good to have you as well. Jerron Sullivan is in here. Uh, free blogging as well. This is the Josh Speaks. You're watching the Josh Speaks. <laughs> what is up, everyone? Good to have you guys in here. Uh, free, free, free blogging. What is up, man? How you doing? Lil Burger. Uh, ask a good question. I'll get to that first here. But as I get through these questions, if you have a burning question, something that is on your mind that you just need my opinion on, you just need me to answer. You're like, hey, Josh. Um, I really need to know what you think about this. I'm in this situation. Help me out. You can always use the super chat function. That's a little dollar sign down below. Um, little dollar sign down below, and you can always just kind of donate a dollar, two dollars, five dollars, whatever it is. It'll put your question front and center. I'll hear a little fireball sound effect. I'll stop what I'm talking about. I will answer your question. That's how I treat super chats up in here. So I'm excited to have all of you guys on here. So um, Let's jump in, jump in here. Uh, I, I want to first get to uh, Lil Burger's question. Lil Burger had asked, how much does fashion matter? Which I think is a good question. Um, fashion, I don't think matters as much as we think it does, right? I feel like there's a threshold of how you probably um, need to look to look decent and, and, and good. Um, a lot of times, that's not really a matter of being up to date on all the latest fashion and having all the coolest things. I think it's more important to focus on having things that look good on you that are a good fit. For example, you can have probably a plain white t-shirt, um, but if the t-shirt kind of uh, curves around your shoulders well, if it's not like loose hanging over here and it's kind of, you know, more fitted, you know, there's a fit to it. Uh, it's form fitted on your body and just looks good. That's going to make you stand on a hundred times more than wearing just something that says polo or Gucci or something else. So I wouldn't worry so much about fashion and trying to have the coolest sneakers and stuff like that. Focus on wearing clothes that, that make you look good. Maybe that's finding colors that work well with your skin tone. Maybe, um, t-shirts or, or pants or whatever it is that kind of fit your height and your build really focus more on the fit rather than the fashion that'd be my personal opinion uh let's jump in and answer some more here um rage says can i ask you what's going on what's going with the live stream from last week yeah so rage that's a good question so i did the live stream last week with D uh dylan um and i i made it private for now simply because the audio is so bad um, what I'm going to probably try doing is maybe downloading the file and seeing if I can edit the audio, maybe raising him his audio in some ways. Uh, it was really weird. For some reason, he was low. I could hear him, but it wasn't translating well on the computer. Um, I have a whole new streaming system now. I'm using Restream on, uh, on, you know, on, online now. But So hopefully I'll jump back on with Dylan and we'll kind of maybe redo that stream a bit. Um, hopefully it'll be better. Be better. 
Uh, Donna says, did you think you ever think your intro would be so iconic one day? I had no clue that so many people, I feel like there's two camps. There's the camp that's like, oh my God, this is the cringiest thing I've ever seen. And then there's the camp that's like, this is the Josh Speaks, <laughs> uh, which I think is funny. I think, you know, it's a fun intro. It was a fun song to create and put together. Uh, and I worked with the musician on that and he kind of took the idea in my head and made it into a fun song. Um, Emerson says, what did you do today, Josh? That's a good question, Emerson. Um, there's a bunch of things that I'm actually doing. I'll tell you guys this. I have a secret project that I'm going to be revealing sometime in mid-June uh, that I think is going to be really, really helpful for you guys. If you feel like you've um, gotten pieces, pieces of advice from my videos and it's hard for you to kind of follow a step-by-step -step process, I'm putting something together that's going to walk you through a step-by-step -step process and I'm super excited to share it with you guys. It's going to be coming out in a few weeks, maybe two, two weeks or so. Um, so stay tuned for that. It's going to be really, really good. Um... Let's jump in and answer some more here. Jesus Montoya, good to have you. He says, what did you do? Uh, what do you do when the girl you like calls you a brother? Ooh, that's a good one. Yeah, yeah. Um, sometimes girls will use terms like that. Oh, you're like a brother to me. Hey, buddy. Hey, pal. And a lot of those terms are meant to kind of disarm the idea that um, there may be something going on between you, that they may view you in some kind of uh, romantic or sexual light, right? So, let me just make sure the Wi-Fi is off there. Um, it's to kind of prevent that technically from happening. Um, oh, that's cool. Streamlabs jumped in and added a poll. I don't even know how that happened, but yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, unless one, one of the mods put it, I'm not sure. <laughs> but yeah, I would say, honestly, I think that um, the way to kind of, uh, uh, you know, deal with that is to recognize that she's saying it for a reason, right? She's saying it because she wants you to get the hint, hey, I don't really like you in that kind of way. If it's something that really, really bothers you, you have to ask yourself this. What is it that you hope to accomplish now with that girl? If you like her, but she's calling you a brother or calling you buddy or one of these other things, you're like a cousin to me, you're like a brother to me. Um, take it as a sign that maybe she's just not interested and decide now for yourself. Do you want to continue maintaining the friendship despite having feelings for her? Or is it time to kind of maybe distance yourself from her and focus on other people where you can actually build some kind of potential romantic relationship where with her, that might not be the case. So it's something you got to think about. Hearing that is always, a, it's like a punch in the gut. I know how you feel. I've been there before. It's a sucky thing to hear. Uh, the second intro is my favorite. Oh yeah, that was the older, longer one. Yeah, that was a good one too. All right, Leo the Beast. Leo says, hey Josh, what should, um, sorry, what do you think I should do after what happened to me, what I said on the DM? Um, give me a quick refresh, Leo, because I can't remember off the top of my head what it was, but I do remember us talking about it. Red Chief says, any good dating apps? Every time I see reviews, most of them have some sort of paywall. Yeah, here's the thing. I'm, I'm trying to do more research into dating apps, right? I think that um, a, a lot of the trends tend to show that dating apps are becoming more and more common. I think it said um, like 20% of people, I think, in I think 18 to 25 or something are, are using dating apps more frequently. 20 to 30% of people are using that for uh, romantic connections. So the numbers are definitely going up. Dating apps are becoming more and more a part, I think, of people, single people's lives. Um, as far as which dating app to use, it really, really depends. It honestly depends on what you're kind of looking for. So <clears throat> If you're someone that's just looking to kind of casually hang out with people or just meet up and, I don't know, hook up or whatever it is, Tinder is probably one of those closer apps, right? Because Tinder or any app that kind of focuses on meeting random people. I know there are some apps. I think Bumble is the one that connects you with friends of friends. Um, that one... Um, might be better if you're trying to look for something that may be a little bit more serious where your world and that person's world may be somewhat interconnected. Um, I th personally think that it, that if you are trying to pursue something, you should probably, f you should probably use um, as many resources as you can to, to get closer to that person. So with an app like Bumble, you may have mutual friends in common with them and that mutual friend could be the key to help you get closer to them, right? That mutual friend might be the reason why you... Um, you know, they're going to feel comfortable hanging out with you because they may say, hey, you know this person too. You seem like a cool guy. Let's let's get together and meet up. So it really depends on what you're looking for. So I'll flip the question back. What is it that you're looking for? Are you looking for a potential partner, relationship? Are you looking for, I was talking with someone just the other day, a Patreon uh, uh, member, and he was telling me he's looking for marriage, right? He wants to get married. He's, he's, fairly, you know, young to, you know, guys in his like late twenties and he's looking for a marriage, looking for a partner. So 
looking on Tinder might not be the best place. For him, it might make more sense to focus on one of the paid dating apps, Match.com, or any dating app that's specific to what his needs or anyone else's needs are. Um, that's what I would really honestly think about. Identify what it is you're looking for, and then um, you know, maybe I'll do a video kind of breaking down the different dating apps and how I think they can lead you towards different goals. Um, but that's a good question. Let's grab some more on here. Oh, Leo, Leo's filling me in. Leo said, okay, so what happened to me was that two weeks ago, I almost got arrested and I was about to text my crush, but then my friend texted for me and it turns out she thinks I'm annoying and she blocked me. Yeah, Leo, I'm sorry to hear that. So I wonder why she thinks you're annoying. Um, did something happen between the two of you that may have led her to think that? Um, sorry, did you interact with her in any kind of way that may have made her feel uncomfortable? Or um, does, do you feel like she just doesn't, for some reason, she just thinks you're annoying, right? Sometimes people just think we're annoying. That's just, that's the, the, the draw that I think we face. Um, but yeah, that, that can be kind of tricky, right? I think that if your friend messaged her for you, it might have been easier for her to block you because it's like it's easy to indirectly tell someone to leave you alone. Right. Um, but if you're telling them directly, you might feel a little bit more obligated to give them a reason to explain yourself. Um, if you have an opportunity to talk to her in person, that's probably the only way that you're going to be able to kind of rectify it. If she blocked you, I'm a big believer that if you got blocked on a platform, don't find another platform to message that person because they blocked you for a reason. And that reason is they don't want to talk to you. Now, if you were to see them in person, that, that can be slightly different because you may have an opportunity to kind of at least just kind of casually say hi and they may say hi back and you might be able to ease the tensions there. But don't hop from platform to platform trying to get that person's attention if they blocked you on one of them. Uh, and this is something I see people do all the time, right? Hey, she blocked me on Snapchat, but she forgot to block me on Twitter. Let me message her on Twitter. Don't take that route. The Jackal says, should a 5'7 guy wear three inch shoe inserts because girls tend to view shorter than average guys as ruined and with those uh, I'd, appear at at, I'd appear at least average? Yeah, Jackal, I hear where you're coming from on that. I think height is definitely a big insecurity guys face, especially if they fall more on the shorter side, right? And by shorter, um, I would say, let's say under the, what we're told to believe is the ideal, which is six feet, even though I think the average guy is maybe like 5'11 or 5'10 or something like that, 5'9. I don't even remember what the average height is, but it's clearly not six feet, but we believe that it is, right? Like we believe, well, six feet is the threshold. Um, I think if you if you feel like wearing a shoe inserts will make you feel more comfortable and confident, I don't think there's anything wrong with that, right? A lot of people say, well, you're not being honest, you know, you're lying about your height and things like that. But I think ultimately what you really want to get comfortable with is the idea of presenting yourself, talking to others, interacting with them. I personally think that if you can start getting more comfortable with approaching and talking and you start to realize, hey, you know what? I can lead into a situation with my interesting personality. I can start fun conversations. I can ask questions. I can engage. If you could start to build those skills, I feel like you may reach a point where you say, you know what, I'm going to try talking to people without the shoe inserts and see if my personality can still help carry me over. Um, but if you feel like wearing the shoe inserts are going to make you feel more comfortable with yourself, I don't see a problem with that at all, right? I mean, it's like, Dating is, is a very kind of, uh, <laughs> it's a wild, wild west kind of feel, right? People will reject people for the slightest things. People will accept people for the slightest things. There's no like set standard on whether someone will, will give you time the time of day or not. Um, but if there are small things like that, wearing a shoe insert that you could do to make you feel more comfortable, I don't see a, I don't see a harm in that. All right, let's jump in and answer some more. I'm liking all these questions, guys. Keep them coming in the chat. Uh, let's take a two second water break. Here. I got to I got to change those facts. Bring you guys some new water facts. Cool. All right, let's jump back into questions. Let's see. Uh, Bowie Daniel says, I have a crush on my friend and he is coming to meet my family this weekend and he flirts with me, but he said he doesn't want to date. What does that mean? Interesting. Interesting. So you have a crush on a friend and he's coming to meet your family this weekend and he flirts with you, but he doesn't want to date. That's a good question. I think that it's possible that he may just enjoy the nature of flirting, right? Not every single person that flirts will always want to be in a relationship. Sometimes people just enjoy the nature of flirting. Sometimes people don't want to settle down. They just kind of want to talk to lots of different people. They want to kind of just be open enough so that they can flirt with lots of different people. 
But here's what matters, Bowie. If this guy is coming to meet your family, it can it can feel kind of confusing, right? You might I'm, I'm sure you're thinking to some degree, why is he taking this step to meet my family if he doesn't want to be in a relationship? Doesn't really add up there. That's kind of weird. I get it. It is kind of weird. So what, what I think you should ultimately do is you should try to establish and be open about what it is that you want. Um, because the last thing you kind of want in that equation is for, for you to kind of be leaning into it, hoping that it's going to lead to something more when that's not what he wants. And then you end up kind of investing time and energy and effort only to realize, wait a second, we're not on the same page. Paul, thank you so much for the two pound super chat. Uh, Thank you for the little, uh, is that a little pair? A little pair with a headband dance, uh, laughing? Thank you so much, Paul. I really appreciate it. Uh, thanks for being a part of this community and part of the live stream, man. But yeah, so Bowie, be up front with him. Let him know, hey, um, you know, I'm looking for a potential partnership. I'm looking for a relationship. Are you on that same page? Do you also want that? If he flat out says no, then you have to start thinking, uh, is it, does it make sense to keep investing time if we're not aiming for the same thing? Let's see. Uh, Shotgun King says, just joined. I have a question. Do you talk on a movie date? Yeah, yeah. Shotgun King. This is a really, really good question. I did a video on this a long, long time ago about going, picking uh, uh, movies for the date. Uh, and there's a lot of pros and cons to it, right? The pro of going to a movie for a date is that um, you know, you have the movie to look forward to. So, you know, you're kind of doing an activity where your attention is taken away from the other person, right? You can just focus on the movie and that's that. And what's good about it is that, um, what's good about it is that after the movie, you have something to talk about. You can always say, Hey, you want to get something to eat? Let's get something to eat. Let's talk about the movie. And now you have a topic right then and there to bring into conversation. That's the pro of going on to the movies for a date. The con of going to the movies for the date is that if you don't really know that person, you might feel like that hour and a half to two hours that you're sitting watching the movie next to some person you barely know might feel awkward, right? It's like, I don't even know this person. Should I hold their hand? Do we just sit here? What do we do? You might start thinking that. So the con ultimately might be that um, if they don't know you that well, it might end up being an awkward experience. Ultimately, I would say I think the pros outweigh the con here because um, I think ultimately, I said ultimately like 12 times, um, I think at the end of the day, you are giving yourself something to do. It's a fun activity. You can find a movie you both enjoy. Now, as far as talking during the movie date, I personally wouldn't recommend talking during the movie. Uh, I would say talk to them a little bit before, tell them how hyped you are to watch it, how excited you are, everything like that, and then talk after the movie, right? Take some time, take an hour, go get something to eat, you know, go for a walk, but talk about the movie afterwards. And what's cool is that you can also segue into other conversation pieces. You can ask what other types of movies they watch, what was the last movie they saw in theaters. You know, you can kind of just really dive into things that they like. I think is a really, really good way to kind of learn more about them as a person. So as far as talking during the movie, I would I would caution against it. Uh, some like I I don't like when people talk during movies. I feel like it's distracting, but. Um, you know, you'll have the moments before and the moments after to kind of carry a conversation. So Chila says, hi, Josh, I'm from Asia. Awesome. Awesome. Cheesy says talking during movies, a crime. I agree. Cheesy. I agree. <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, Chino says, hey, Josh, there's this girl in my class that really flirts with, uh, oh, where'd it go? Um, girl in my class that really flirts with me, like blows kisses and tries to hold my hand. I want to talk to her, but I'm too shy to. Chino, that's a really good question. If this girl is trying to hold your hand and blows kisses at you, it's possible that she likes you. Now, it's also possible that maybe she's doing it to joke around and play around with you. But if you want to get to know her better and you see that she's doing that, that's a real opportunity for you to kind of capitalize on it, right? You might want to kind of jump in and, and, and you know, like... I know that you're nervous and you said you're nervous about it. Um, I know you said you're nervous about it. In fact, I'll, I'll get to your question in a second. I want to jump in and answer Ollie Music's question. Ollie, thank you for the two pound super chat. Ollie said, I'm going camping with a girl. I just need advice. Yeah, Ollie, here's the thing. Camping is a wonderful activity to really bond with someone, right? When you're camping, you guys are roasting marshmallows over a fire. Maybe you guys are cooking food together. If you bring a guitar or some kind of music, maybe you guys just hang out and chill. What's also cool about camping is that it just, it's like going for a walk is an awesome date, but when you're camping, like that's par for the core, right? Like say, Hey, you want to go for a walk? You want to hike? You want to explore the grounds? Use that as an opportunity to have one-on-one -on -one time with her right now. 
I wouldn't try anything, you know, weird in the, in the tents and stuff like that. Really just focus on uh, trying to have one-on-one -on -one time with her. Maybe it's like, hey, let's go. If there's, if, if your campground is near, let's say a store, hey, let's go to the, let's walk to the store or, hey, let's go get firewood or, hey, let's go find sticks to roast marshmallows. You know, try to find opportunities where you can spend that one-on-one -on -one time together. Um, and what's cool about camping is that a lot of times people try to stay off of their phones. So it really creates an environment where you guys can just talk right? You could talk, you could learn about each other. So what I would recommend Ollie going into it is try to come up with a few different questions of things you want to learn and, and just learn about her as a person. What's her favorite movies and, um, you know, what are some of her favorite movies, music? What does she like to do for fun? Uh, what does she like to do during the summer with her friends? What are some of her hobbies and her interests? Really think about all those questions so you can bring them into the fold when you guys are camping together. Ollie, thank you for the two pound super chat. Going back to the previous question there, I think that if you're nervous around a girl that you like, but she's kind of giving you signals like that, right? Like she's trying to hold your hand, blowing kisses at you. The way that you kind of step up, I think, and be a little bit more confident is, here's the thing. If she, let's say, goes to hold your hand, um, I know you may feel nervous, but try to hold her hand back and see how she responds, right? If she sees that you're willing to kind of match her energy there, she might be impressed with that. She might be like, whoa, who's this guy? He's stepping up. He's putting himself out there. And I feel like there's like a confident snowball that rolls down, rolls down the hill. Once you start doing things little by little to be more confident, you start to feel um, more energized to be more confident, right? It's like if you go to hold her hand, she's going to be like, whoa, you know, that's awesome. And then you might be like, you know what? I held her hand. Let me let me let me blow a kiss back at her. Let me ask her out on a date. Let me go for a walk with her. Let me make a move. You're going to start to see that confident snowball start to roll down the roll down the hill. Yeah, guys, no need to spam the chat here. I'll try to I'll try to answer whenever I can. What are your thoughts on self-help books? I think some of them are good rage masters. I think some of them are bad. The ones that are good, I think ultimately um, the ones that are good, I think ultimately offer some kind of more practical, uh, actionable advice. I feel like there's a lot of self-help books that maybe fall into the category of what Sam Harris uh, would consider woo-woo, right? Which is like, maybe they speak of this kind of like higher level interconnectivity, one with the universe thing, which to a degree, that's kind of what we are. We all are interconnected, but they maybe don't offer a level of practicality in what to do. So I think it's important to kind of, if you're looking for self-help, try to identify what it is you need help with and try to look for books that offer more practical steps, right? Like I've been trying to read a lot of books on communication and how to communicate better, right? I'm trying to learn more about NVC, which is nonviolent communication, and it's how to listen properly to people and it's how to communicate in a way so that they can truly hear your needs and so that they can truly feel comfortable sharing their own. So like that's a self-help topic, right? Learning how to communicate better. But it's a like the book that I was reading, uh, I think it's called Say What You Mean. Um, and it offers very, very practical advice. There's, you know, ties in from different studies and research that's there. I feel like that's kind of the marker of a book when it's starting to tie back to things that, um, you know, are practical and actionable to some degree. I watch YouTube videos that self-help books is not helping. Yeah, look, there's, I, I, and I understand it to a degree. Some people take the stance, self-help books are not helping because they're telling you to do things, but they're not helping you get there, right? So that's what I'm saying. It's like, you can read a million advice books, but until you put it in action, you're not really going to accomplish anything, right? There are people called uh, information junkies or, you know, like they just want to consume everything, consume, 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 but they never act on it. And that's something I try to help you guys with too. I, I mean, if you guys watch my videos, I want you guys to put yourself out there. I want you to try to talk to people. I want you to kind of feel more comfortable taking a step outside of your comfort zone and acting on it because I feel like that's where the real progress happens. Uh, let's jump in and answer some more. Um, Carter Gordon. Carter Gordon says, have any advice for what to do when summer starts and you have no way to communicate with your crush besides Snapchat? Yeah, Carter, that's a good question. Um, if you have no way to communicate with your crush besides Snapchat and summer's coming about, and this is something I think a lot of you guys might be struggling with right now, right? School's coming to an end and it's like, well, uh, I don't talk to my crush that often. I don't have a way to communicate with them. I only maybe have one way to talk to them. And I never really talk to them there. You got to look at the remaining days you have as your window of opportunity, right? If you have a week left in school, if you have three days left in school, whatever it is, Use that as a real opportunity to start to build in-person con connection with your crush if you still have some time. 
Um, and I know it might feel weird or rushed in some kind of senses, but being able to kind of approach them, talk to them, ask them what their plans are for the summer, um, start to learn a little bit more about them, kind of putting yourself out there is going to be the process and the key so that when you do message them online and you do start to talk to them, let's say on Snapchat or whatever it is, they're going to feel more comfortable and at ease with you messaging them. That's the key. You want to lay a little bit of the groundwork in person so that when you do message them online or through Snapchat or whatever it is, they actually feel like it's not weird that you're doing it. That's, I think, a lot of people's challenge because they don't have a close enough connection with their crush that they feel it's just weird to start messaging her out of the blue now that the summer's here. If you feel like you haven't invested any any um, effort or time or energy into getting closer to your crush, and you really only have that small window, but you've never really talked to them ever, it might make the most sense to kind of just let the summer pass, focus on yourself, work on yourself, and then when school starts, present a newer, better version of yourself that's more confident, more open to communication, more open to getting to know them better. Let them see that you've grown over those two months or so of summer so that you can come in way more confident than you were before. Uh, let's see, jumping in into some more. LOL man says, hey Josh, how should I know if my crush is faking her own happiness when she meets me? Please answer. That's a good question. Hmm. Faking, she, is she faking her own, her own happiness? Hmm, I, I guess we'd have to think about that. What, what, what would make you think that, that she'd be faking her own happiness, right? Um, maybe, and I'll try to think through, think through that here. Maybe what you mean is, um, hey guys, y'all, y'all, no need to spam. Um, maybe what you mean by that is when you talk to her, maybe you feel like she's just being polite for the sake of being polite. Like maybe she'll casually respond back and stuff, but maybe she's not as interested and you feel that energy from her. I think that it's kind of hard to figure that out, right? It's hard to figure out, does this person want to talk to me right now? Do they enjoy my company? Maybe there are some signs that they give off that show that they don't. Those signs might be that like they're constantly like looking around for a person to like talk to or a way to kind of escape. Maybe they're kind of giving you very short answers like, yeah, cool. Mm -hmm. Not really giving you much to work with. Maybe they're avoiding eye contact or they're kind of just like, half facing you like they're ready to leave. Those might be signs that they're not interested, but if your crush is talking to you and you guys are having basic conversations here and there, um, I would think deeply about why you may feel like she may not be enjoy talking to you there. Do you think it might be something that internally you're thinking of yourself? Maybe it's an insecurity that's coming out or are you picking up signs directly from her that's leading you to believe that? Let's jump in and answer some more here. Um, Life Seeker says, Josh, should you tease a girl or say bad boy mean things to her if I don't know her too well? Yeah, um, I did a video a few weeks ago kind of talking about the different types of guys girls are attracted to. Bad boys tend to fall, in my opinion, they tend to fall in like the pickup artist category, um, which tends to be... <sighs> Sorry. Which tends to be that... Um, bad boys tend to either fall in the pickup artists or they fall in the, um, what was the other group? The Peter Pans in the sense that they, um, they just do whatever they want. And I think a lot of times the reason why girls are attracted to those bad boys is because bad boys display a level of outward confidence. But when you lift up the hood and look underneath, you see that that, com that confidence tends to be directionless. It tends to not aim in the direction of helping others, being kind, being mindful, being present. It tends to just be outward expression and energy. So I wouldn't recommend being a bad boy. What I would honestly recommend is um, focusing on building up yourself, being honest, being open, and being confident. But you don't have to say things to try to be a bad boy to get her attention. I think what's going to get her attention is showing interest, right? Showing that you like her, but also establishing yourself in a way where you are proud of what you do, what you, how you carry yourself, the friends you make, the people you interact with. You're proud of those things um, because... If you, if you ultimately kind of are chasing um, a persona that you think girls will like, then you're going to constantly be changing yourself. You're never going to feel confident in who you are. You're always going to kind of be working towards people pleasing. And I think that that could be a major problem. Let's jump in and answer some more questions here. 
Uh, Bonker says, Bonkers Griffin says, is it normal to like someone because of personality and smartness, not just looks? Absolutely, Bonkers. I honestly think that looks is kind of the first interaction, the first piece that we see of someone, right? Like you see them, you look at them, you decide whether you're attracted to them or not. As you get to know them better, you'll start to see that looks just kind of become a commonplace of you interacting with them, right? Like you may be in awe the first few times you see them, but as you get to know them better, that awe may start to die down a bit and you're going to start to learn more about the personality, right? There are lots of people that are with attractive people, but they're bored in those relationships and they're bored because while the person's attractive, they just don't connect with them. They don't really have a sense of fun or a sense of interest that they both share. So uh, being attracted to someone's personality or what they bring to the table, that just how they carry themselves, their smartness, I think is a great thing to do. It's a great thing to kind of dive deeper into really seeing if you connect to that person beyond just looks. Are looks important? Yes. However, they shouldn't be the end all be all because that's not going to help you carry a longer fulfilling relationship. Um, yeah, just like Rage, Rage Master said, if, if you guys, if like, I see a lot of questions coming in, guys, if I'm missing your questions, feel free to use the super chat, uh, just donate a dollar, two dollars, five dollars, whatever it is, it'll pop it up front and center, I will stop what I'm talking about, I'll answer your question, something I want to share with you guys here, I want to point out a few, uh, cool things, so, um, one thing I want to say is that I know a lot of you guys, um, have a lot of questions, and there's a lot of things on your mind you want to talk about, if you want to talk to me one on one in a private setting, maybe you want to jump on a video chat with me, you want to talk, um, you know, just a 30 minute session video chat, you want some coaching to help build your confidence, you want to talk about a dating scenario, you can always become a Patreon member, right? If you go to patreon.com slash to Josh speaks, you can set up a time frame, become a champion level member. What's cool about that is that we can meet every single month to talk about what's on your mind. Uh, we can have a 30 minute chat or an hour chat, depending on whatever tier level you are. There's also, you also get access to our community group chats. So every single month I get the different Patreon members together and we have our community group chat where we check in with each other, we fill each other in on, on what's going on in our lives. It's really, really cool. Plus you get shout outs to my videos and you get to use the, if you become a YouTube channel member, you get to use these, these uh, cool little emojis right here. But I'd recommend if you guys want to talk to me in a one-on-one -on -one setting, becoming a Patreon member is the best way to do it. Um, there's different tier levels. So see what works for you. Go to patreon.com slash Josh speaks. Another thing I want to share here, guys. Um, I wrote a book called embracing the awkward. I think a lot of you guys know about it. Um, for those that don't, this is the book, and it's a guide for teens to succeed. Now, whether you are middle school, high school, college, or even post-college, I think this book would be helpful for you. I document a lot of my own experience and my own journey and kind of working towards being confident, but I share, as we were talking about in terms of self-help books, I share a lot of practical tips on how to be more mindful, how to start conversations, how to deal with rejection, how to kind of find your path and your purpose. All these different things that I think people may struggle with, I try to outline as best as I can in this book. Uh, it's available on Amazon. If you go to Amazon and type in Embracing the Awkward, it'll pop up. Or you can go to thejoshspeaks.com slash awkward. The audiobook will be coming out soon. I just spoke to the publisher, Mango, and they were telling me... Um, the audiobook's going to be coming out fairly soon. So I'm super excited about that. People always ask if I narrated it. I did not narrate it. Um, I'm hoping to one day narrate it, probably when I have a better mic setup and everything too. But for now, the audiobook will be another voice, professional person that does audiobooks voices. But I think it'll be a great way to help you guys out as well. So if you want to kind of read my advice, get it in book format, this is the way to go. Batman says, I can't get the Patreon, but can I DM you on Instagram to talk about my issues? Yeah, you can send me a DM on Instagram, Batman. Um, I don't always get to all my DMs on Instagram. So the next best way, if you have a quick question, something on your mind, you just want to quickly ask me and to talk, shoot me a text message. That's probably the next best way to do it. I get hundreds of Instagram DMs. I can't answer them all. It's just a lot. But if you shoot me a text message, more than likely I'm going to get to it. Uh, what's cool is that if you send me a text, um, uh, I use this app called Community, and it allows me to kind of send you updates on new videos that I have. I get to, I, I jump in and I always ask uh, the people through my text community different questions, ideas for videos and stuff. It's just another great way to kind of talk to me, um, just to get one-off kind of answers and questions and things like that that might be on your mind. So shoot me a text, the number is 718-400-7129, and I'll, I'll text you back. I'll let you guys know my answers to your questions. 
but cool, cool. And one more short thing, right after this live stream, these live streams, YouTube live streams generally go for an hour, so it's 5.36 right now, I'll be ending it at six. I jump live over on Instagram. So if you're not already following me on Instagram, you gotta follow me on Instagram, that's that's what you gotta do. Follow me at the Josh Speaks over there. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go live um, right after this live stream for the Instagram after party. All of you guys are invited, and what's cool about the after parties is that I bring you guys on to video chat. So if you requested to video chat with me, you can jump on, ask a question, and we can talk. It's really, really cool. All right, let's get back into more questions here, guys. Let me just pull it back up. Uh, does the tech text work in the UK or is it US only? That's a good question. Uh, I'm going to have to find out, actually. I think it might be US only, but I'll, I'll have to double check. All right, cool. Rachel says, Rachel W says, well, since I'm a woman, I know for me, I would prefer that a man just wants to know who I am, my interests and more. If the man is confident, that make, that really makes me feel comfortable, FYI. Yeah, Rachel, thank you for sharing that piece of advice. If there are girls or women watching the stream and you see someone ask a question or share something, feel free to share your expertise and your advice as well, right? What you enjoy, what you're looking for in a partner, um, what are some of the positive things that you see guys do? Uh, and I think Rachel said it best, right? When a guy carries himself in a confident way, it allows the girl to feel more comfortable. She feels like, okay, this guy's got things under control, because when you come into a situation nervous, that makes the other person nervous. They start to wonder, oh my God, this person's nervous. What's going on? How come they don't feel comfortable? Is this something I'm doing? Am I weird? Are they weird? They start to think that. But when you come into a situation confident, they start to feel like, okay, I can let my guard down. I can relax. I can open up more. So you want to try your best to walk into situations carrying a level of confidence. Now, it's easier said than done, but I think that's the, that's the mindset you want to kind of build towards. But thank you for sharing that, Rachel. I really appreciate that. Let's see. Um, Yusef says, Josh, please help. I need advice. Yeah, Yusef, drop your question in the chat. I'll try to grab it when I see it. Let's see. Bandit Brick says, my crush sits next to me a lot, and I usually talk to her and joke with her. She's always nice, but after class, she's always with her friends, and they're suspicious if I'm around. What do I do? Yeah. The friends can always be scary, right? You always wonder, do my friend, uh, do, do, sorry, do her friends like me? Do they not like me? Do they think I'm weird? Um, the way that you kind of win over your crush's friends is in a way, in a way, you have to treat your crush's friends the same way you would your crush, which might mean that when you are joking around with your crush, you're flirting with them, you're asking them about their hobbies and their interests, you may want to do the same to your crush's friends right? By doing that, they're also going to feel like you're open to talking to different people. You're just a sociable person. You want to get to know people better. You like to put yourself out there. They're going to start to feel that energy from you. And here's the thing. If your crush's friends can grow to like you and they start to say, he's a really cool guy, that makes it so much easier for you to get closer to your crush because your crush is going to listen to her friends. If her friends are saying you're a good guy, she's going to be like, maybe he is a good guy. If her, her friends are saying he's a weirdo, he's a creep, every time he sees us, he, uh, he looks away or he doesn't talk to us, then that's going to influence her opinion. So the better relationship you can develop, develop with them, the better chance you'll have with your crush. Now, if they already think you're a bit of a weirdo, try your best to change that, right? Like that's never set in stone. People sometimes think others are weirdos because they don't really know them that well. So give them a chance to learn more about you to know you better. I think that's going to ultimately help. Uh, Jalen says, hi, Josh, since my crush has left high school, the only thing I can do is wish her the best. Yeah, Jalen, I know this has been a rocky road for you for a long time, right? You've liked this girl. You've wanted to talk to her, but she had a boyfriend. She wasn't interested. She blocked you. She unblocked you. It's been very, very confusing, I'm sure, along the way. Um, and I think that you're kind of taking the best approach there. At some point, if it's just not going to work out, it's OK to let that go. It's hard. And sometimes it feels damn near impossible. But it's important to let that go, to recognize that it's really hot in this room. Not every crush is going to pan out into something. Sometimes that crush that you have that it didn't work out with is going to be a story that you're going to tell years and years uh, moving forward. You're going to tell your friends. You're going to tell your kids. You're going to tell everyone that you know. You know, I used to have this crush back in school. This is where I made a mistake. I should have did this better. 
I know because I do that all the time, right? If you guys have seen my story time videos, you know I've talked about my uh, high school girlfriend. I've talked about crushes I've had. I've talked about girls that I like that I messed up with. These become stories. These become part of my experience, um, part of my growth, right? I can share the things I learned from those experiences. I can share how I've matured, how I've grown as a person, and I can reflect on younger Josh and see where the differences were. So, you're going to have those moments where your crush is going to enter and then leave your life and you're going to be sitting there going, what, what did I do? Why couldn't I handle that better? Why didn't, th why didn't things work out? But recognize that these are just going to be stories along your life journey. All right, let's jump in and answer some more here. Um, kudos to you guys, by the way, for being super, super active. We're at 41 likes. We can easily get this to 50 likes. So if you haven't already hit the thumbs up, guys, let's let's hit 50 likes on this. Um, Batman says, can I ask questions in the chat in the Instagram after party? Absolutely. Absolutely. You could type in questions. You could submit questions. You could jump on the video chat, whatever you want in the, in the IG after party. All right, let's jump in and answer some more. Evangelos Rock says, hey, Josh, one girl in class often plays with my hair and it says I and says I have nice hair. Is she friendly or not? Plus, she's very experienced and I'm not uh, and makes me worried for some reason. Yeah, I hear you on that. Um, if she plays with your hair, that could be a sign that she's interested in you as a person. Here's the thing, guys. Here's the thing. We spend a lot of time trying to read signs and then determine whether or not this person likes us. And I feel like we're taking a backwards approach. You shouldn't spend your day reading signs and then making a conclusion. You should instead... Try to figure out how you can create more signs so that you know for sure that they like you, right? If she's playing with your hair and, and she kind of flirts with you and does all these fun little things, she is being friendly. Now, if you want to pursue her and see if kind of that actually, if her playing with your hair means that she likes you, well, then the next thing is for you to take the step and for you to flirt with her and for you to ask her out and for you to spend one-on-one -on -one time with her. By doing that, you're going to get a much better answer than trying to decipher little things like she played with my hair, she looked at me, she smiled at me. What does that mean? You're going to get a more definitive answer if you could say, hey, she she went on a one-on-one -on -one date with me. She was resting her head on my shoulder. She was smiling and laughing the whole time. Uh, you know, like that's a more clear sign that she likes you. So try not to settle for analyzing the small little things. Try to create bigger scenarios that you have more of a reason to believe she likes you. <clears throat> um, let's see what else you guys got. Cool boy, si cool boy Sire says, yeah, Cookie Mario says, grow, learn, and adapt. I love it, man. It's exactly what this is all about. Cool boy, cool, cool boy Sire <laughs> says, it's a girl that likes me, uh, but I don't like her, but I don't want to hurt her feelings. What should I do? Yeah, yeah, this is a tough one. I did a video on this, how to let someone down easily. I think ultimately when someone likes you, but you don't feel the same way, the best way to approach that situation is to nip it in the bud as soon as you can. I've made this mistake tons of times. There have been several times where girls liked me and I kind of knew that they liked me because they would spend a lot of time around me and they'd always want to talk to me, but I never kind of said anything or established anything, partly because, to be honest, I enjoyed the attention, right? It feels good when someone likes you. You like that someone's paying attention to you and they want to be with you, like it feels good. So I think my reason for not being open was because I enjoyed the attention from them. Now. If you want to kind of make sure you don't hurt them, though, the best way to do that is to let them know, hey, you know, I really value our friendship and I hope that we can remain friends no matter what, you know, like establish that you want to maintain a friendship and that's what you want to build with them. You may need to say it a few times because sometimes when you say it, they don't really hear it because they like you. They just think, well, maybe he said uh, he sees me as a friend, but maybe he'll like me as something more. You know, we're always hoping when you like someone, you're always hoping that it's going to be what you want and not what you think it might be. Right. You're always hoping that it's going to be that they like you back. Um, so you may need to say a few times, I really value our friendship. I see you as a friend. Do you see me as a friend? And really kind of drive that point home. All right, let's get into the water break here. OK, let's jump in and answer some more questions here, guys. Um, Connor says, uh, Josh, what are some amazing ways of moving on that does not involve blocking her? That's a good question. Um, yeah, like 
it's possible to move on from someone without blocking them. It is possible. Now, does that mean that whenever you see that post on Instagram that it's not going to sting? It probably will be, you know, but I think ultimately the way that you can move on from someone without blocking them is you want to divert your attention to other people. You want to be able to say, when I get those tingy little feelings inside of, of butterflies, when I think of this person, I also get that when I think of this person and when I think of this person, because I put myself out there to develop new crushes. That's the only way you're going to, you're going to kind of get over this one crush by developing new crushes where your attention and your focus and your feelings are directed elsewhere. Um, you don't have to block her if you don't want to, right? I, mean, I, I think a lot of people say just block them and forget about them, but sometimes you don't want to, right? Sometimes you do enjoy looking at their pictures and it does feel good. It feels good to see someone you like and to think that someone's attractive and to see their pictures. I get that. So the best thing you can do really is divert your attention to other people. Start, look, you may say to yourself, but I don't have any other crushes. What do I do? Well, this is the opportunity for you to start to develop other crushes, right? Crushes are not things that you just, you look at someone and you have them, right? A lot of times it's, you notice something about them. There's a, a quality that stands out. Maybe it's the way they smile. Maybe it's the way they walk or talk or the way they look, you know, try to dive into the qualities of other people because that's going to help you develop crushes, new crushes as well too. Yep, Dark Tar pointed this out. I'll share it here too, guys. I forgot to share it. Um, Dark Tar said, if you guys want to talk more about dating and plenty of other topics, join the Josh Speaks Discord, guys. We have a Discord channel. This is our community online where you can ask questions about dating. You could talk about school. You can get advice on general things. Our Discord community is freaking awesome, right? If you have the Discord app, you need to join it. Um, if you don't, Discord is kind of like a chatting app. Um, it's free and open, right? Our community is free and open. And it's just it's just a really, really cool place to make friends. I've seen a lot of people develop real solid friendships there. Um, we just have an awesome team of people that are just trying to make the server just a wonderful place to be. It's a great place to talk about, like I said, um, maybe books that you like to read, food you're eating, your fitness, um, your dating situation. Jump into our Discord, guys. Get to know the people in there and stuff and ask your question. It's a great place to kind of open up and share what's on your mind. So just go to the joshspeaks.com slash discord. It's a wonderful, wonderful community. And I'd love to have you as a member of it. Honestly, I would love to have you as a member of it. But thanks for bringing that up, Dark Tar. Appreciate that, man. Let's get this back. Cool. We're at 49 likes. We can hit 50, guys. We need one more person to like it. Haley Plays says... Hey, Josh, how can I deal with being left out? Yeah, Haley, this is another uh, troubling uh, question I think a lot of people face, right? Feeling neglected by others. Uh, maybe you don't get invited to things. Maybe people um, don't really talk to you in school or um, there are core groups of friends, but you don't really feel, feel like you get along or fit in with anyone else. How do you deal with that feeling of being left out? It's a hard feeling. It's a sucky feeling to go through, right? That's the first thing. I want you to know that I acknowledge that and I know that it's difficult. Um, I think the next best thing uh, you could try doing if you feel like you're left out is try to think about what are the things that you like? What are your hobbies and your interests, right? And maybe start with online communities as a starter, right? If you're someone, um, Haley plays, I can't see what your profile picture is, but um, let's assume you're into a certain TV show or a certain type of, let's say you're into anime or you're into drawing or you're into music of some sort. Try to find different communities online that also like that thing, because that's a way to kind of join with like-minded people, people that have the same similar interests and hobbies as you. And it can become easier then for you to kind of start to feel like, all right, there are people out there that get me. There are people that have things in common with me. Um, you know, there are ways for me to kind of like be my authentic self with other people online. Now, how does that trans translate into real life, right? Like developing online friends is one thing, but you may also want in real life friends too. And I get that. I think um, I think one way to kind of manage, Joshua, are, are you racist? No, I'm not racist. Maybe I missed something. Oh, why am I ignoring your question? Uh, uh, Ahmad, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not intentionally ignoring anyone's questions. There's a lot of questions and I'm just kind of grabbing them. If you have a burning question, you can always use the super chat function and it'll put it front and center, uh, with, well, you know, in front of me. Um, but in terms of translating that your hobbies, your interests and your personality into real life, um, you may want to look into whether or not your school has different clubs or organizations. And I can guarantee there are other people in your school that might have similar hobbies to you, right? If there are things that you like, you might want to try to talk to um, a, a school guidance counselor and, and talk to them about wanting to form a club at your school, 
right? And that might be an opportunity for them to create flyers or to share it with other teachers and stuff. And who knows, you might be able to kind of create an in-person club with people in your school that maybe you never would have thought to talk to before, but you guys all came together for the similar interest and hobby. That'd be one, to, one uh, uh, you know, way to kind of deal with it there. But that feeling of feeling neglected by others, it's a hard one. And the best thing you can do is to have people you can talk to. So if you have a close friend, or if not, you can talk to your family, you can talk to friends online. If you join our Discord community, that's a great place to make friends online. You can talk about what's on your mind. Um, what did you even say, uh, Ahmad? Maybe I missed it. Bro, she gives me signals, but she is playing hard to get. If the girl's giving you signals, um, but she's playing hard to get, I would say go back to the advice I said before. Um, try not to spend all your time reading into signals. Try to create reasons for her to like you, right? Creating a reason for her to like you would be flirting with her, talking to her, you know, asking her questions, learning about her hobbies and interests. That gives her a reason to like you. Uh, and then on top of that, ask her out. Ask her out on a one-on-one -on -one date. That's the ultimate reason to, you know, like if she agrees to go on a one-on-one -on -one date with you, then that means that she's interested in you. She wants to get to know you better. Owen says, Josh, is there an after party after this? You betcha, Owen. There's definitely going to be an Instagram after party after this. I hope you're on there, Owen, and hopefully we can chat there too. Let's see, let's get some more questions in here. Um, oh, Rachel's responding to Hype the Gripe. Rachel, Rachel said, in my opinion, just ask her why she misses you and define the relationship. It's hard for men and women to be friends. Does she add drama to your life? And is she using you? Is she bothersome? Those are really, really awesome questions, Rachel. Thank you for jumping in and sharing that. Yeah, guys, check out Rachel's channel and check out what Rachel's, uh, the knowledge she's dropping there too, because I think that she's sharing things from, from a you know, female perspective, a woman's perspective there that, it's different from mine, right? And she can kind of give you more insight, I think, into what she would appreciate and, and you know, how she approaches the situation too. All right, let's grab some more. Um, Connor says, I'm racist to cats. P.S. They are disgusting and gross. I used to not be a cat person, right? I've always been a dog person. Over the years, I think I've grown to like cats more because... In my neighborhood, there's tons of stray cats and some of them are like cool, fun cats. And then some of them are just like jerk cats and they like pee on things. But the cool cats are pretty cool. I can appreciate the cool cats. Um, uh, Yusef, if, um, oh, let me see, I get, I get very nervous when I see her and I have huge butterflies in my tummy. Yeah, if you get nervous when you're around your crush, I think there's a few techniques for that, right? Um, a lot of times nervousness is built up because we don't know... Uh, how to approach someone we don't know what to say and it's that pause in between doing it uh, that that creates uh, more space for us to kind of worry and get, get, get anxious right so the best way to kind of just like push through it is use the three second rule right the three second rule is basically <clears throat> sorry it's basically this when you see your crush when you see them give yourself no more than three seconds to walk up to them and say hi meaning you're in class or in the hallway you spot your crush one two, three, and you just start walking towards her. Don't give yourself a reason and say, what do I say? What do I do? Don't, don't overthink the situation because if you overthink, you're not going to do it. Walk up to her, say hi, and then ask her an interesting question. And if you want to know what an interesting question would be, I would recommend checking out, let me pull it up here. Um, my 20 icebreaker conversation starters. This is a free guide I've put together. If you go to the joshspeaks.com slash ice dash breakers, these are 20 questions that you can use in a conversation with someone, right? There are questions that you can use to learn more about the, to, to, to learn more about their personality, um, to kind of get them to open up more to get them to feel more comfortable around you. It's a free guide I put together. Check it out, guys. Uh, I think it'll be helpful for you. But Use this guide along with the three second rule, and that's going to help you get past that butterflies in the stomach where you start to overthink things and hold yourself back. Cool. Um, Connor says, I'm in need of a woman's perspective. Yeah, um, uh, Rachel, if you want to jump on, um, you know, and, and uh, Rachel, if you're interested, maybe join our Discord community and stuff. I think a lot of people have questions and they would really appreciate a, a, a woman's perspective, and Connor is one of them as well. All right, let me grab a few more on here. Let's see what we got. Velocity. Velocity said, 
Hey, Josh, at college, I do see a lot of attractive women around uh, college and would like to talk to them. However, I feel nervous and I never know how to correctly start a conversation. Any tips? Yeah, here's the thing about college. Um, you gotta remember, when you're in a college environment, you are all there for the same purpose, right? You're all there because you're working towards your degree, you're, you are trying to figure you know, yourself out, you're trying to find your path and your purpose in life. So if you wanted to approach someone in a college campus, um, you can use the fact that you're both there for the same purpose to your advantage. And that advantage might be um, walking up to them and asking, hey, do you know where this building is? Um, you know, like, um, you know, like I'm taking this class here and I have a class over there. You know, what's your major, by the way? I'm just curious. Ask them what their major is. You know, like start a conversation that's related to college and the college setting there. Um, a lot of times I think people especially in a college environment, um, they want to find people that may, that are maybe on a similar path as them, maybe have the same major. They want to find someone that's also as motivated as them. Um, so they may be more open and receptive to talking to you if you kind of start the conversation about something college related. Now, um, is it a matter of walking up to a girl that you see uh, in the hallway or walking on campus and, and saying, hey, you know, like, do you know where this building is? Hey, you know, like... Um, um, I feel like I've seen you in my science class before. Are you, are you in this class? Uh, and then if she says yes, or she says no, say, oh, cool. Well, what's your major anyway? I'm, I'm curious now. You know, like you can lead in with that. And once you start to lead in with college related topics, you can then segue into more personal topics, right? So you might want to say like, oh, what's your major? What do you like to do for fun? Um, you know, like, you know, um, do you go home on the weekends if, 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 if you guys are living on campus or something like that? You can ask them, like, oh, what do you like to hang out around here? Or what's your favorite place to get food on campus? Like you can start to segue now into more personal choices, things where she can say her favorite food, where she likes to hang out, what her major is, things where you can learn more about her and her personality from that simple, basic college question there. I've done a few videos, too, on how to talk to someone to make friends in college. Um, and the making friends piece can also be replica replicated for dating as well. All right, let's jump in and answer some more. <laughs> Connor says, how dare I say the cat word? I apologize, Connor. Um, what does the cat mean? Cats are furry little creatures, furry little feline creatures. Unless cat means something else, I really don't know. <laughs> um, Megalodon says, please, uh, I need help, man. I've been on the stream for a while. All right, Megalodon says, hey, Josh, there's a girl I really like, but she has a boyfriend, but I feel like he's using her. Um, I feel like he's using her. It might be a bias, though. I want her to be happy, but it kind of hurts me when they're together. Yeah, Megalodon. This is something I see happen a lot. If you like a girl that already has a boyfriend, what I think tends to happen a lot of times is we tend to be a little bit more overly critical of their relationship because we secretly maybe want them to break up and we secretly want her to be single and we secretly want to date ourselves, right? Like that's kind of where we're, where our minds are heading there. So you might notice things in their relationship that maybe it's like, oh, well, she's clearly not happy with her boyfriend. Maybe she was sad and he didn't help her out. Or maybe she was complaining about him one day. Why is she with him? Right? Like this is the question you always ask. Like, if the girl is not happy with her boyfriend, why is she with him? Well, there's also pieces to their relationship that you don't see, right? You don't see when they do connect. You don't see when they have fun together. You don't see when they overlap in their interests and values. You kind of just get half the story. So I understand it can be annoying to see them together, but I think the best thing for you to do in, that, in the meantime is to focus your attention on other people. And I'll tell you why. By focusing your attention on dating other people and getting to know other people, what you allow yourself to do is to, one, work on your dating skills, right? Instead of sitting around waiting for this girl to be single, you're out there talking to different girls. You're out there trying to meet new people. You're out there trying to... Um, trying to, you know, build your own confidence, you know, work on the things that are going to make you feel more comfortable if she becomes single again. Because when she does become single again, you now will bring a whole wealth of experience because you've been practicing and talking and dating other girls. In the meantime, you'll bring that whole wealth of experience to your interactions with her now to the point where she'll be like, wow, you're, I feel like you're a totally different person. You've grown so much. And that's the mindset you want to kind of carry in. What should I do when she eye contacts with me? If she makes eye contact with you, um, honestly, yeah, please don't spam, Ahmad. Um, I'll, I'll see your question. And if I don't, like I said, you know, 
I won't. But if she makes eye contact with you, um, maybe the best thing for you to do in that moment is to make eye contact back. I've done a video too on eye contact. And if you feel like that's something you struggle with, check out the video. I think it'll be helpful for you. All right, I'm gonna answer one more question here um, before I take us into our mindful moment. If you know what that is, you know what that is. If you don't know what that is, I'm excited to show you guys our mindful moment. All right, let's see what we got in here. Hmm. All right, Regia Edgecomb, or Edgecomb says, I have a crush on someone. I feel like, I feel as if they like me too, but he answers my messages late and says he's busy. He's active in sports and we have exams coming up in school. He is flirty, but gives mixed signals. Yeah, I hear you on that. Um, it sounds to me like he's kind of got one foot in, one foot out, right? Maybe he gives these signals of interest, but he's not fully acting on it. Maybe he hasn't act, asked you out or he hasn't kind of, you know, given you enough uh, of a reason for you to believe that he likes you, right? He, you said he takes a bit of time to respond to your messages and things like that. Here's the thing. In a situation like that, I think what ends up happening, and I think that what, what might happen is that when you, when, you know, when you like someone, we kind of hope that that person's going to be a little bit more proactive, right? Like secretly, we hope they're going to be more proactive. But what really needs to happen is if you like the person, you need to be proactive. That's my approach to it all the time, right? Like if you're the one with the crush, you're the one that has to initiate. You're the one that has to kind of start conversation. You're the one that has to try to be there for them to kind of want to pay more attention to you. So what can you do, uh, Regia? I think that if he doesn't really respond to your messages, you might want to kind of review and reflect on the messages that you sent. Do you send messages that are kind of maybe more boring in nature? Maybe it's just like, hey, what's up? How's it going? How you doing? And it's kind of basic messages. Or are you asking fun questions? Something I always suggest to people to kind of up their kind of texting game is don't just send text messages, right? Send text messages asking questions, record voice notes, send little video clips, take pictures of fun things that you're doing. Be very interactive with the different types of content that you send them because it's that variety that kind of piques their interest. It shows them like, you know, wow, I don't know what to expect from this person. They may send me a picture and that's fun. They may send me an audio note. They may send me a little video clip. They're going to get excited because they don't know what to expect. Uh, and then second, try to focus on the quality of the type of messages you sent him, right? Um, like I said, if you're sending more basic things, try to shift more towards fun and interesting questions. Maybe he posts something on Instagram um, where he's, I don't know, going for a hike or something or playing sports. And you might want to ask him like, sure. You might want to ask him something sports related. Hey, what position do you play? How long have you played sports? Um, do you want to play sports when you get older? What's your favorite sports team? Ask him these deeper questions to learn more about his personality. And then second, a third actually, if you feel like he flirts with you, he sends these mixed signals, flirt back, right? A lot of times people flirt with us and we try to, like I said, we try to sit there and read the mixed signals. What do they mean by that? Did they mean this? Did they mean that? Flirt back. Send him, you know, flirty messages. Tell him you think he, he looks good. Um, tease him about things. Put that out there and be open about it. Because by being more proactive and putting yourself out there more, you're going to increase the likelihood that he's going to respond back. Now, let's assume you do all these things and he just still kind of gives you these half-assed answers and he isn't really active. Well, try not to get so hung up on this one guy, right? You have a lot to offer, uh, Regia. You have a lot to offer. And if he's not someone that's willing to appreciate that, well, then okay. There are so many other people that you can get to know and that are worth getting to know as well. But that was awesome, guys. We're at 58 likes. If you haven't already hit the thumbs up, let's get to 60. We could do the 60. Now, guys, it is time for our mindful moment. This is my favorite part of the live stream because, you know, I'm answering question, question, question. We're all talking and stuff. A mindful moment is a point uh, in these live streams for us to kind of take a step back, to slow things down, and to reflect on some of the things we heard and talked about in this live stream. Thank you, Rachel, for being so active and answering people's questions. Thank you, Cheesy and Dono and, and, and everyone else for jumping in and kind of being mods and just really kind of making facilitating these conversations too, guys. Thank you everyone for asking questions. What I want us to do is to reflect on what we talked about today. I think there was a theme that we kept kind of coming back to that I want to approach and I want to talk about. And the theme is waiting for the moment, right? You're, we're, we're always waiting for the right moment to do something. 
Uh, is this the right time to talk to my crush? Is this the right time to flirt with them? Is this the right time to um, to ask them out? Is this the right time to to I don't know make eye contact with them? We're always looking for the right time, and the right time doesn't exist. There is no right time. All that exists is the here and the now. This moment right now is all that exists. So when you are in a situation where you are around your crush, be very present minded. Recognize I am here and I am now. And what do I want? I want to get closer to this person. I want to get to know them. I want to build something with them. Act in the here and the now. Put yourself out there. You have a lot to offer. Don't ever sell yourself short because you have a lot to offer. So with that, I want us to close our eyes. We're going to listen to the sound of the bell. And I want us to think deeply about all the awesome things that we have to offer and that there's no need to wait for the right moment because we can create the right moment by being in the here and the now. Let's close our eyes. Take 10 seconds to think deeply about what we have to offer. Let's warm up the bell. Thank you so much, everyone, for being a part of this live stream. This was a lot of fun. Like I said, head on over to Instagram. Follow me at The Josh Speaks to keep this conversation going. We're not done yet. I'm going to be live over on Instagram answering your guys' questions. Um, I'm super excited, guys. This is Sparta. Oh, maybe I missed something. Um, thank you guys again for being a part of the live stream. Head on over to Instagram. If you're watching the replay, check out the videos over there where I'm going to answer more of your top questions, guys. Thank you again, and I'll catch you next time. As always, love and peace. See you guys then.